Motherfucker. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is DSP News. The unreliable ones. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Snow Brunel, DSP Gaming, blaming the pig cult for continuous business failures and raging. <laughs> now, if you guys don't know, we are coming off the, uh, what was that most recent game that he just played and just quit in one session? I think it was called Burnout. We're coming off him rage quitting burnout. And then Secret of Mana or, or Mana. And then there was one other game before that. He's rage quit like three games. With this being said, <clears throat> Phil has been ranting on Twitter saying that it's not necessarily his fault, that people should be more engaging, that there wasn't enough new releases coming out, and it's basically not his fault. As everything in Phil's life. Very interesting set of circumstances to say the very least. We're going to go through, see what he has to say, see who's going to be at blame, see who he see who he expects to fix this particular problem, a problem of his own making, and uh, hopefully we find ourselves to be entertained by it. Before we actually get into the video at hand, let me <clears throat> at least mention one thing as it pertains to new releases. And Phil, since you watch the Tractor Channels, Please pay attention. New releases cannot save you, Phil. And it cannot save you because in my own spare time, I wish I probably had reached out to Eddie uh, to Eddie for this because he would have been probably quicker at breaking down the numbers if he doesn't already have a spreadsheet on this. But I'm coming to the conclusion, Phil, that every new game you play, I doubt because of your declining views, you're breaking even on just the games that you purchase and on your for your playthroughs. Meaning that even if you're doing 150, 200 part playthroughs, I doubt that you're generating enough money from YouTube, I mean in particular, to even break even on the game. Which would explain the desperation and your frustration on Twitch. And given the fact that uh, Drizzy, um, is over there with Ninja and with others making this money hand over fist on a game that you could just as easily play. It's easy, it's free to play. And that's another thing, real fast. Why are you so mad that it's a free to play game? Like do you hear, if you ever hear Phil talk about it, that's one of the first things that he says and he has a level of bitterness in his voice when he says it. Almost like it should be exclusive for some reason. But whatever, but um, you got Ninja, who's sitting there getting money hand over fist. He's getting himself some notoriety because of the fact that famous people are playing the game with him. And you have your stick up, you have the stick up your ass about this whole crazy set of circumstances on, oh, well, it's a dumb game. I don't want to play it. Nah, 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 nah. But yet all the games that you're playing doesn't have, it's not bringing any attention in. It's not drawing anybody to you. So you would think it's time to change up, switch gears. You don't like PUBG. All you do is drive around and basically answer questions. And I think that's the reason why you like PUBG so much because it's an easy game that you don't have to do much. You're expected to lose. You're expected to fail. And you're okay with that because now you can just engage with chat and hopefully get more money out of them. PUBG or Fortnite, you wouldn't be able to do that. See, in Fortnite, you would actually have to play the game or you're just going to get bodied early and see, you don't want to do that. See, you, you go ahead and you've, at least from what I've heard, you've gotten upset about this whole building mechanic 
it's another learning curve, Phil, just like anything else. But you're too old, though, right, Phil? You, you, you don't feel the need to, to have to do that. You just want to point, hopefully have auto um, have uh, auto aim, and, and just press the button so people die. And that's it. You want it as simplified as possible. That's why you keep trying to go back to World War II, Call of Duty World War II, in a game that's in such bad shape that the next game coming out, which Black Ops 4, is coming out a month early, and what is considered by some in the Call of Duty community in the Call of Duty community as the holy grail of video games, meaning Modern Warfare 2, even though it has its own clusterfuck of problems like anything else, is coming out, uh, let's see, what is today? Today is the 19th? Today is the 19th, and they're talking about Modern Warfare 2 is going to come out in April, I think. April, I think the end of April to be exact. But that's Infinity Ward, I think. And that shouldn't be till next year. So you see where Activision is getting desperate. And are you going to go back to playing Modern Warfare 2? No, you're going to get eaten alive doing that dumb shit. But maybe you'll play just because... Um, just for the nostalgia purposes of it. Phil, the point of all of this is basically new releases aren't helping you. Why aren't they helping you? In my own personal opinion, you're not enter entertaining. You're really not. So much so, so much so that even the detractors are getting bored of you. And that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you, you're, you've been saying, at least in previous weeks, what will the detractors do without you? If things keep going the way they're going, there, there will always be detractors. There will always be someone that have something to say about you. But what are you going to do without the detractors? Scenario. You know what I'm saying? A what if, if you will. I don't know, Phil. Uh, the new games, you need to stop blame the, blaming your games. You need to stop blaming the detractors. You need to stop blaming studios. You need to stop blaming your fan base. And you need to blame the person who is at most at fault. And that'd be yourself. I don't think you're man enough to do that, though. Actually, I know you're not man enough to do that. And that's a shame. But let's see if we can make some. Uh, let's see if we can make this entertaining, any which way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking, unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network and Productions. You guys all know the slogan. It's time to watch me work. Absolutely disgusting. Sound good? Sounds great. Burn out Paradise Remastered. Now, listen. Yesterday I played the game. It was the first time I'd ever played a burnout game. I'll be quite frank with all of you. All right, you know I am a pretty straightforward guy. I don't beat around the bush. Of course. I don't feel Burnout Paradise is a great game for streaming. And you might say, well, why, Phil? But it's very simple. There's no story, so there's really nothing for me to react to besides if I make a wrong turn during a race or there's a cool wreck or whatever. But that can only go so far when it comes to reactionary gameplay. You know what I mean? Like... Um, it's not like I'm doing a highlights reel of the best moments. I am doing a live stream here. So you guys are going to see a lot of downtime of me driving around from corner to corner, from event to event. Um. <clears throat> so like you said, since he's not doing a highlights reel, that would require editing, wouldn't it? And you don't have time for that because edited content on either one of your channels doesn't bring you any views, which means it doesn't bring you any ad revenue. Hmm. But you're complaining about how you're not getting enough interaction meaning give me money on your streams well, you're bit in a catch you're you're caught up in a bit of a catch-22 there aren't you phil there's a lot of uh not necessarily entertaining stuff going on uh so far during my playthrough of this game and i get that all right i totally get that unlike a game like okay need for speed payback oh wow phil being unentertaining no not phil phil's the greatest 10-year legacy how could you have made it this far without being entertaining for shame. For shame for ever thinking that. Had a lot of foibles and a lot of issues, but it had a story. So there were cutscenes, there was dialogue in between. Wow. You know, it, would, it helped to fill the dead air. In this game, there's really nothing to fill the dead air. Um, now, if you guys wanted to interact, let's say you guys are talking in the stream chat, and I'm talking back to you, and maybe we're shooting the shit as I'm, you know, doing stuff, okay. 
Uh, and we did do that to some extent yesterday, but it's kind of tough when I'm doing a four-hour gameplay stream and there's just so much dead air between repetitive racing or repetitive driving, wrecking, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? I don't know what else I could do for two days until we get to new releases on Tuesday. You know, some people are complaining they're bored. I'm not, there's nothing going on. You're right. I mean, what else do you want me to do? There's no new releases. There's nothing I can do. I played Burnout Paradise, the new release, after people demanded it. it Snow Burnell's right. He's not a he's not a streamer. He has no charisma, no imagination, and without new games to talk about, even the pig hole is being is getting bored of it. But it's more than that. Phil never had any of those things, and the new games only carried the day. Because back then, there was only so many people you could go to to watch new games. Now there are people who have the game that Phil's the sorry the games that Phil are waiting for right now. You could probably go to Twitch and see someone playing those very same games. When Phil gets ready to fire up his his uh, PS4 on Tuesday, the game will be done in its entirety and will be on YouTube. Phil's a relic. He can't keep up. There are other people that already have him beaten out. There's too many choices now. This isn't Phil in a very small pool anymore. It's blown up. It's much larger. There's way more diversity. And there's way more choices. And that's what kills Phil. <laughs> Rhyming accidentally. But that's what ends up really being his downfall. Is that there are other choices. Better choices. Anything is better than watching Dark Side Phil make an ass of himself in a game that he obviously doesn't want to play and is feeding you fake reactions to try to drum up anything. Just saying. Now people are saying it's boring. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> I can't do much about this, folks. If I play an old game, it's... So give me money, even though I'm going to give you a shit product. Gotcha, Phil. Boring because it's old. <laughs> if I play... A hot viral game, it's boring because I'm not a pro-level player at it. Any moment. Is, is that the new excuse now for Fortnite? Oh, I'm not going to play Fortnite because I'm not a top-notch player. You're not a top-notch player in Street Fighter either. People still come out to see that. Kinda. I can pick up a controller. And I can play any game at professional level. What a complete idiot. If I play multiplayer games, they're boring. If I play... The new re-release, it's boring. Well, then what, I mean, what do you want? <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't have a new AAA release every single day. That's the point I'm making. I just don't know. I, uh, you know, I'm bored. You're... He's reaching now. Because now he's saying that I can't have a hot new release all the time. He's literally like, okay, I have nothing else to offer. I have nothing else to bring people in except for new releases. Thanks, Phil, for finally backing yourself into the the last proverbial corner. Thank you for finally admitting that you're not really worth much of anything outside of new releases. And even that's not saving you. So what are you going to do, Phil? You're going to now have what? You're going to play the new releases and drag them out as long as you can until you get to the next batch. And if you can't, you give them, what, two weeks, a month? Two months worth of dead air until the next new release is coming? You're going to constantly just keep playing PUBG until people get bored of it? You're constantly going to play Call of Duty World at War, which is dying already, even though the new head of the studio is making some, I would say, are making some pretty entertaining choices, but that's just me, though. Um, <laughs> um, not that I go for underdogs or anything like that, but, you know, he, he's, he's making some decent decisions. So what now? Like what now, Phil? You're an old man grasping at straws. And he knows it. You can hear the desperation in his voice. For what? What do you really think this is going to get you? If anything, excuse me. Let's continue. I mean, not stop trying to force me to play something I don't want to play. But every Then stop forcing these kids to give you money for a house that they don't live in. Every day I see it in the stream chat. Play Fortnite, play Fortnite, play Fortnite. <sighs> oh, what? You're the one who said that you're bored. You're the one that's saying that the fan base is bored. You're asking them what should you do. 
they're recommending Fortnite. You don't want to play it, so then your viewership drops. That's what I've seen. I don't know if, that, if you're going to allude to any of that, but that's my initial guess. Let's see if he proves me wrong. Definitely as a person, I've grown, I've changed, I've become way more mature, that's for sure. Man, I'm stupid. Seriously, it's not about that. It's not. It's not about, let's just play what's popular for the sake of playing. The reason I continued to play PUBG is not because the game is... So why do you play new anticipated games then? Same thing too. A lot of new games are overhyped also. Like, <laughs> whatever. Phil's, he's, he's shooting himself in the foot and he don't even see it, but he does see it. It's just he doesn't want to feel like he's jumping on the bandwagon for something and people will criticize him for it. All right, whatever. Popular is because the game has given me... Oh, you guys, seriously, you just need to stop with demanding me playing a terrible game that I don't like. You know? It... Okay, okay, then stop demanding money from these people and if they leave, stop crying about why did they all leave. If you're not going to play, you're there to entertain these people, Phil. And uh, I, I know you don't understand that, so I'll try to break that down for you. People come to you because it's your job, as a streamer, to entertain them. Meaning that if they come to your stream and they see you playing a shit game that they don't want to see, you switch over to the game that they want you, that they do want to play. Unless your charisma and your personality can carry the day, which you can't. Couldn't carry the hour. You can barely carry the minutes. With that being said, whether you like the game or not, you do what you have to do to push, to p appease the mob. If not, then stop streaming. Go back to YouTube. Go back to your edited comments. Or sorry, well, you do edit comments, but go back to your edited content. If not, people are just going to stop watching, which is what's going on now. You're alluding to this. This isn't hard. You don't, Phil is coming to the realization that he doesn't have the control that he once did. If he ever really had it. And now that's starting to hurt. And it's starting to hurt him where he apparently needs it most. DSP News. I'm sorry. That guy needs to be kicked in the freaking balls. Indeed. He's an asshole. Indeed he is. The game is not very good. I don't like it. So why keep demanding to see me play? I don't understand. Right now, people are voting. Tonight, do you want to see Call of Duty or do you want to see PUBG on my second stream, okay? The voting has been going back and forth and back and forth for the last uh, 12 hours. More than... Your choices suck. That's why. And actually, it's been about 14 hours now. Um, and uh, it's 50%. It's 50-50. So people can't even decide among, you know, among your, the viewership. People can't decide, do you want to see one or the other? So even you guys are undecided. You see my point? Oh, like, it doesn't boy. seem like no matter what I do right now... Until new games release on Tuesday, it seems like no matter what I do, I can't please the masses. There is no right or wrong choice here. There's no, no matter what I play, people will be will be angry. That's your fault. Yep. You created the monster. Sure did. You unleashed the monster, uh -huh. and now your complaint is, well, the monster's too powerful to control. Well, fuck you. That's your fault. Nothing I can do. If I play Call of Duty, oh, he's played this too much recently. It's boring. If I play PUBG, oh, he's not great at this game, and it's, it's a lot of gathering, and there's not enough going on. It's boring. If I he's not great at Call of Duty either. Shit. I play more Proton Paradise. All you all all you hear from him when it play when he plays Call of Duty is, oh, I got shot, but I should have shot that guy first. Oh, the lag. Oh, this. Oh, that. It's just constant excuses. And in PUBG, all he does is drive around and wants you guys to give him money. That's it. Oh, there's no he should just call it. Axe the King presents. PUBG, Q and A. Go ahead, Phil. You can take that. You you need the help anyway. Story to this game is just repetitive driving. It's boring. If I go to Fortnite, oh, he doesn't play this game properly. He's a master crafter and he doesn't do super jumping off of shit and it's boring. So you see my point? <laughs> well, then again, you're not even willing to learn the game, though, as it pertains to um, Fortnite. You're not willing to learn. I'm actually, I actually shudder to think, but I'm brave enough to say it. I think you're intimidated by it. I think you're intimidated by what goes into Fortnite and you're not willing to play it. I think he saw a ninja stream, not the one with Drake in it, but he saw a ninja stream, for example, and he saw what it actually takes and the type of strategy and what goes into it, and he's like, I can't do it. Instead of looking at it as a fun new challenge, he looked at it as, there's no way I can do that. I'm not going to do that. And that's what happened. Because if it was a stupid kitty game, 
that even the kiddies can pick up, he should be playing it. But he won't because I don't think he can. I think he's I think he's afraid of it. Do you see my point? I mean, I hope you do. Do you want to play the fucking game? Wow. Right now, we're in a situation where, like, if people can be patient and just be like, all right, I understand. Phil doesn't have anything major to play. There's nothing really out right now. Let's just come and hang out with him. There's plenty for him to play. He just won't play it. He wants you guys to pay him money to play what he wants to play. And then if you don't like it, he gets mad at you that, oh, well, I understand you guys are giving me your money, but I want your views, too. Hmm. Okay. On the stream. So let's not really care so much about what game he plays. Let's just come by and hang out with Phil today. Let's talk with him. Let's shoot the shit. You know what I mean? Let's what the fuck, man? You got a girlfriend for that. Or is it not really a girlfriend? See, here's the thing. And I've, and I know you, I haven't actually put out, well, I would hope at the time that I've done this, I've put out my solo review on that whole cat situation. You want people to come and interact with you. You want people to come and chill and talk to you. You have a girlfriend for that, Phil. I come to you a stream to be entertained. To be entertained. Roman Coliseum type shit. I wish to be entertained. Either you say something funny, or you bleed, or something. I wish to be entertained. I'm not here to fucking be your buddy, man. Just shut the fuck up and play the goddamn game. Now, you want people to pay you money to be your friend? Are you a cheap cam whore? What is this? I'm so disappointed. Even more so than Kat. I'm sure she's very disappointed. You have a girlfriend for this stuff, Phil. No one needs to <clears throat> come in and hang out with you. There's this thing out there that I would say just about everybody has. It's an amazing situation. It's uh, called a relationship. And as a branch of that relationship, it's called friends. And, and friends are people that you get to talk to uh, essentially whenever you want and whenever they want. And it's great. Because it adds a bit of diversity to your life. Adds a bit of flavor, in your case. Since, you know, you like to eat a lot. Nothing wrong with that. Just people who eat a lot tend to work out too, but you don't know what that is. But uh, it, it provides variety. It provides uh, a type of substance. Not just to one physically, but to one mentally. What you want now is you want these people, these kids, to come to you and throw money at you in large quantities and essentially be your friend and i would shudder to go even further with that but i mean do you need like a therapist or something is that what you're looking for you're looking for somebody in the your fan base to kind of hear your problems out day to day and help you work that out if that's the case then wouldn't that render cat as nothing more than a maid or a roommate even what's the point of her exactly that's the whole point of being in a relationship, Phil. Just saying. Let's just have a fun, casual stream that's not so serious. It doesn't have to be a serious, ongoing playthrough. Let's just relax and have some fun. And if the then stop playing games then and go to the real-life section or in-real-life section of Twitch and just talk about whatever you want to talk about all day. Oh, you don't want to do that because you're supposed to be a gamer. Yeah, I'm a gamer. Do that then, Phil. If you don't have anything else to play, everything's boring, go switch your tags Go to the in real life section and just talk to your heart's consent, content there. Just saying. Just try to keep it honest. Games are great, great. And if not, who cares? We're just here to hang out and chill and, you know, and enjoy ourselves. No, 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 mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, wait, no. Mm -hmm. And. No! I think things would go really well. You know, there's streamers who do very well with those kinds of streams. You know, they do. They absolutely do. Every day, it doesn't even matter what they play. They're just casually playing some random crap. They're not constantly doing an ongoing playthrough. And Snorpa now, you gotta get his right. They're not begging people to pay their taxes, though. Just saying. So, that's what I mean. But that's I think people are so in this mentality that DSP, Dark Side Phil, is the guy... He was the guy that got caught masturbating in front of children. It's the guy Sorry. watching his Twitch. Is that really him? Is he the yes. one that got caught, Matt? Yes! Who plays every new release. He plays it start to finish, you know, on release day. And this is what he's done for 10 years. And got No one even knows you for that anymore, Phil. 
The only people who remember Phil for that are the old guard. <clears throat> the people that Phil came up with, essentially. You know what I mean? So your Alpha Omega Sens, if you're rich from Review Tech USA, kind of. He actually knows a little bit more about Phil than most people. Like, some of those other YouTubers from way, way, way back in the day who started up, no Phil for that bullshit. Everybody else pretty much know him for the shit that he's really known for and stuff that he really does on a day-to-day -day basis. Treating people like shit, begging for money, swearing to God that he's so successful and everybody else hates him for it. I don't even know why Phil's pushing that narrative. God forbid he try to change or do something different because this is not what we're looking for. And I think that's the problem. Like, for example, PUBG, all right? I openly admit PUBG is not a great game. In particular on Xbox One. I don't know about PC. Again, I never played it on PC. On Xbox One, the game is subpar. The aiming is terrible. The frame rate is terrible. There's a lot of things that are just terrible in general about the freaking game. The game could be way better, all right? But the reason I play PUBG is because... I need that money. I really do. I need that money uh -huh. to pay my bills. Sure do. It gives me the opportunity to have fun reactionary stuff with you guys. I can talk with you, have discussions with you as I'm running around and gathering resources, you know, driving around to the end of the match. And then at the end of a 25-minute match, we have a big suspenseful 10-minute ending, right? When you're getting down to the top 10 and things are getting really tense, it's pretty entertaining. And how many times have you even made it that far? That's what I thought. <clears throat> but there are some people who are furious with me. Oh my god! What the fuck? Whoa! Whoa! I'm not even exaggerating. That I've played PUBG as much as I have since it came out in December. Phil, how dare you keep playing this boring game? You're supposed to be playing full playthroughs of every new release. And from start to finish, this is what you're known for. You should just keep doing it. How dare you leave your, your, something you've done for 10 years and do something completely different. And you know? That doesn't even sound right. It really don't. That really sounds like the narrative he's been pushing for all these years. On, I'm the guy who brings out, that plays, or sorry, that does raw, unedited gameplay from start to finish of a game. And that's what got me virally popular. And that's what I'm doing. That's what it sounds like. I've never heard anybody actually say, yeah, Phil, why don't you just go ahead and play this game without editing it or doing anything like that and play it from start to finish. I don't even think I've heard people in your own community say that. So now Phil's trying to flip it and be like, oh, I'm actually trying to change to get better and do something different, but it's my fan base who wants me to stay as the old Phil. Get the fuck out of here. That doesn't even sound right. That's the thing. I think people need to stop with that. And I'm just being real with you guys. I'm not angry or anything. I'm just saying, you know, how you gonna things tell change. Them, how are you going to tell them to stop, though, when you've been pushing that same propaganda for years? Whatever. And certainly, I'm not <laughs> telling you guys that I want to become... One of these streamers who never takes anything seriously, who starts a game and quits it within one session. You know what I mean? I'm not like that. Um, I mean, if that were the case, I'll be honest, I wouldn't be playing Burnout Paradise today because most, so many people complained yesterday it was boring. I wouldn't even be giving it a second shot today. I is that true? Well, I know the first part's true. Uh, Snorper Nell says, in a session, nah. But in two or three sessions, he does. And he has about a, a hundred rage quits in counting. Now, I'm hope I, I would assume the second part uh, is an exaggeration. But for any of you guys who might be listening to this, I'd like to, if you guys actually know how many games Phil has rage quit over the years, I'd love to hear it. I know that's a lot to ask of making a list. You don't even have to tell me what the games are if you don't want to. Just give me a count or just give me a guess on how many games you think Phil's rage quitted. That's a that that'd be a, that'd be a good look. I'd, I'd like to know that for sure. You already dumped it, and I would have been moving back to something that's a staple that people like to see. I know you're lying. Okay, just being real with you. Um, <clears throat> but I think people are so closed-minded. And that's another thing too. Um, it's funny how. Phil wants to have this Rage-a-thon situation coming about. Plus, he has his birthday fundraiser coming up, too. That should be interesting. But uh, Phil doesn't want to play... People want Phil to play Fortnite because they want to see... Because they know he's a shitty player. He's a terrible player. And they want to see him get mad about it. And he refuses to play it, as Snorpinoff says, because his ego is too fragile. But isn't he the same person who said he wanted to have, like, a Rage marathon? So why not play Fortnite and give people a taste of what's going to come next? Why don't you have some of the new people who come to your stream see how salty he is and be like, you know what, this is actually kind of funny. I might stick in for this and see if he can, if you can bring more people in. No, Phil can't do that. Phil will only do that if he can pro if he can profit off it, if he can prosper from it. 
You guys who give him thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars? Nah, I don't give a damn about what you say. Not until I need it. So you guys will put up with whatever I feel like having you guys put up with. But when I'm desperate, then I'll make a fool of myself. Gotcha, Phil. And they're so resistant to change. You know what I mean? Like, right now, what we're having is a dichotomy. We've got people who have been around for a long time. They're used to one thing. And when I change my content to be something different because there's times like now where there's really nothing going on in, in, the, release, uh, in the realm of new release games, they lose it. And if you look on YouTube, it's true. My viewership on my YouTube channel is way down. Views, views, views. I don't want to be Mr. Views. Well, I'm not making ad revenue. Didn't he say in a recent video, though, that his his views are just kind of steady? Now, all of a sudden, they're going down? Phil, you got to pick one or the other, man. You can't just keep lying about that shit. We all know your views are down on YouTube. Your subs are down on Twitch. Everything is pretty much falling apart at the seams. Just admit it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you holding on to this fragile piece of your pride means not a damn to nobody. It really don't. You know what I mean? It would, people would respect you more if you were like, if you just admitted, hey, I had a good run, not really, but you had a run, 10 years of doing it your way, and whatever it was that you built up, you slowly but surely tore down. Good for you. You can spot, you know what I'm saying? You constructed Gautopia on the backs of others, and at the end of the day, it all fell apart, all because you weren't willing to do what it needed. You weren't willing to do what needed to be done to preserve it. Just take that and move with it, man. Like all this constant bickering and all this stuff about it wasn't my fault and I didn't do anything and so on and so forth. It's just petty for pettiness sake. It's not even worth it. It's really not. No one's winning. I mean, you're not winning. You know what I'm saying? The fan base is already bouncing. They're already leaving. I mean, what more do you want? Like how much does a person need to fail until they come to the conclusion that they're failing. How much more do you need to lose, Phil? I feel like Phil Phil's pride tells him just to keep going and humiliate yourself and do whatever you have to as long as you keep the house. Because at the end of the day, the condo is definitely not going anywhere. I don't, I don't know. Where? Because no, nothing's been going. I've been playing downtime playthroughs, right? Throwback playthroughs I just, I, I've already played before. You know? <laughs> And then you've got, uh, you know, multiplayer games, like PUBG or Call of Duty. You know, I've got Call of Duty sets from two, three days ago that don't, they only have 200 views on a video. <laughs> you know, some people, again. I actually did see that, and I said it was pretty sad. That's pretty sad to go to a channel that has over, like, 50,000 videos or whatever. And it's been four or five hours, and there's only two views. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. He can't even get sympathy views. Oh my. I mean, Jesus Christ. Hopefully Cat doesn't mind giving him a sympathy hand job. Jesus Christ. And some people are all about the views because they're idiots. I mean, that's ridiculous. There used to be a time when it didn't matter what I played, people would watch it and enjoy it. You know, and even if my worst match of Call of Duty is still pretty entertaining, in my opinion. Uh, but that's it. People don't, they're, they're so in this mindset. Why is Phil still playing Call of Duty? He never would play a multiplayer game more than like a month in the past. He's changing, right? Why is he still playing PUBG? This game ain't so great. It's like, and he skipped, he skipped Monster Hunter World. And he didn't play Kingdom Come, whatever the fuck it was called. And he played other games. Unacceptable. He needs to go back and do exactly what he did for 10 years straight. And you know what? I don't like that. I don't. I'm being real with you guys. I don't like that. You know, if I... <clears throat> want to play games that I know I'm going to enjoy, then you should come out and check that out. And if not, don't. Well, wait a second. Why would they want to come out and play and watch you play a game that you enjoy if that's a game they don't want to see? How, what kind of sense does that make? I'm sorry. Let me bring that back, though, so we get his full statement. I like that. I don't. I'm being real with you guys. I don't like that. You know, if I <clears throat> want to play games that I know I'm going to enjoy, then you should come out and check that out. And if not, don't complain. Just don't watch it. You know what I mean? And people aren't watching. That's kind of your problem. People aren't watching. So, yet again, Phil Brunell wanting to do what he wants to do. But if that is counterintuitive to the people who are paying him money or the people who take time out of their day 
to go and watch him stream. Oh, well, if you don't want to do what I'm doing, then leave and don't come, then leave. And then they leave. And when you say stuff like that, they'll leave and more likely they won't come back. Or if they do, it'll be a while until they come back. Instead of doing yet again, this is what I've, what I've said before. Instead of him doing what he needs to do, he wants to continue to do what he wants to do. And that's because people enabled him to do it. People allowed him to go ahead and limp along like this for a, almost a decade. That's what happened. Just saying. DSP News. What? 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 Like, it sucks that uh, there is a large group of viewers that I know are just in this one mindset that this is what you've always had. And if I try to change anything up or do something differently, it's a bad thing. Um, and I'm not the only person that this happened to. There's many YouTubers, many streamers this has happened to. I've actually just addressed it recently with Angry Joe, who wanted to do something completely different, tries to do other kinds of things. Why are you going after... Whatever. <laughs> the thing is... Here, let me let him finish his point on Angry Joe, and then I'll jump in on that shit. Because I actually follow that close enough to where Joe was wrong for what he did and whatnot. I understand that what Joe was trying to do, but he went about it poorly. So, let's go. Videos and people hold it against him and say negative shit about it. Um, you see what I mean? Like, so here we go. I, I go ahead and here we, I'm going to have probably Sunday and Monday where... All right, I don't care about that part. All right, so Angry Joe. What happened with Angry Joe? Angry Joe had got himself a new girlfriend, to my particular understanding, and uh, he took a little bit of time off. And he realized during his time off, because uh, a new woman in your life will do that, and if, you know, you got a boatload of cash that you're spending on that new girlfriend, we'll also teach you that also. We'll uh, show that to you. Is that, you know what? I've worked really hard. I got a good amount of money in the bank. I don't think I need to go ahead and do these highly elaborated, uh, elaborate, edited uh, skits for reviews for a little while. Maybe I can just put them off and do it periodically. And instead, I have enough of a foundation that I think I can do something else. So what he wanted to do was start getting into his movie reviews, which at the time he was already doing. And uh, he wanted to start reviewing TV shows, Game of Thrones in particular, because he's a big games, a Game of Thrones fan. He wanted to get into that. Here's the thing, Joe. Um, and I'm not saying anything that hasn't already been said to Joe. But like, <sighs> no one ever comes to you for that. You know what I'm saying? Now, does that mean he shouldn't do it? No, I'm not saying that at all. That would, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that when you think of Angry Joe, you think of him, you're thinking of the man uh, who literally took on, tried to take on, I should say, Capcom and made some damn good points. And who calls out the people who he needs to call out and says it like we want him to say it because he feels what we feel. Now, that whole uh, VGA fiasco, I won't even talk about that. <laughs> we won't talk about that. I'm, I'm going to leave that alone, Joe, because good God, that was... Good God, Joe, the one chance that you had... I know, I'm contradicting myself, saying I wasn't going to talk about it and then talk about it. The one chance that you had. The one chance that you had to finally dig into these people, the higher-ups, and let them know what the average game gamer feels. You, oh my God. Anyway, whatever. Whatever. You weren't ready. You, you just you just weren't ready. And I, I get it. Anyway, Joe wanted to take his channel in another direction. He had made himself quite a bit of money. He wanted to relax. He's given us a number of years, and I, I agree with him. He gave us a number of years. He gave us a lot of content. And he wanted to chill, and he wanted to do something else. He wanted to bring out those reviews periodically and he got a shitload of pushback what brought him even more hate and pushback was when he started to lash out at the very people who were getting upset with him instead of addressing the situation calm cool and collective he lashed out he got upset he got pissed off he started banning people he started this that and the third and literally, he turned the internet against them. And that's essentially what happened to Joe. I'm missing, 
I'm obviously skipping over a bunch of extra shit, but that's what happened with Joe. Yet again, he reacted poorly. And it didn't need to happen that way. And he's been on the internet long enough. No disrespect, Joe, but you've been on the internet long enough to know that you do not lash out at your fan base like that. You should know this. You should. But for some reason, a lot of you old timers are under this, and no disrespect when I say that, but a lot of you old timers have this idea that, oh, you gave us years and years of content and like you guys expect to use these people as retirement or something. Or you expect that, oh, because you gave up free content, you expect that, you know, you, you change is, people come to people on YouTube for, for certain particular stuff. You know what I mean? And there are, I'm not saying that you don't have a right to do what you're doing, but you should have explained the situation and slowly scaled back so people can understand what the, what the regiment's going to look like moving forward instead of lashing out at them. And that's why you got all that hate and that's why all that shit came at you. And it wasn't a good look, Joe. It just wasn't a good look. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> TSP news. I need to find something to fill the time and entertain you guys. But I'm... And I don't know why Phil brings up Joe or all these people that are m enormously successful than him anyway. Like, come on, Phil, use yourself as the example. Oh, you don't want to do that because then you have to actually confront the actual problem. I got you. I'm going to go and keep playing this. I got cappuccino to go and make. Damned if I do and damned if I don't. Damn if right. If I complain burnout, I'll get complaints. It's boring and no one will show up. Yep. If I play PUBG or Call of Duty, I'll get complaints. I played those too much. It's boring. If I play Ultra Street Fighter 2, I'll struggle to find matches. The matches I find will be laggy and people will complain. I don't want to see that. It's boring. You see? But, but here's the thing. New releases come out. Boom. Now all of a sudden everyone's excited again. We're going to engage. We're going to see what Phil's doing. And I get that, but not every day can be a giant high-profile AAA new release. So what we've got to do, we've got to work together. You as, the, as a viewer and me as a content creator to find a happy medium here. What is the, What are the things <clears throat> that I could go between or go back to the well, per se, to entertain you guys during time periods like we've just had, these two drought months, right? February and this first half of March, there's been nothing going on in the realm of big releases at all. It's been dead, right? Until we can finally get to a point like we've got this week with Sea of Thieves, with the Song Park expansion, with uh, Nino Kuni 2, Far Cry 5, Batman, just five new games in the next two weeks. And what happens after all those games are done? Or what happens after you end up rage quitting one, two, or three of those? Then you're going to be back in the exact same rut. Then what? Until we can get to points like this, what are we doing between that's going to make people happy? I don't know. I just wish... And how do you call yourself a, a, a gamer and a streamer? Which means you have to be entertaining by definition. And yet, you yourself have no idea what you're going to do. And you're, you want, you're asking your fan base for help, which is nothing wrong with that. But then you don't want to listen to them because you don't want to play what they're recommending to you. Then what's the point of even asking? That people wouldn't get so angry. Because I've been seeing anger recently. I know you're only here for the titties. So since you can't see my titties anymore... I know I'm going to probably, you know, lose probably about half my viewership. Sorry, guys. No more tits. I, I did nothing wrong. Of course I not. did everything correct. Yep. People saying, Phil, you know, it seems like people aren't coming to your streams as much anymore. Well, yeah, yeah it's been true. Because look at well, he banned a bunch of them, too, by the way. He's been banning the shit out of them. I'm actually talking to somebody on Twitter who was talking to another friend of his. And we're trying to... I, I want to know, in particular... Can a streamer determine or distinguish between a paid sub and a gifted sub? And if so, it would explain why Phil was going after all those gifted subs for a while there. He was almost ex almost exclusively banning them. So when you ban a new sub who's been gifted a sub, a subscription, if you ban them, then why would they want it? First off, how can they come back to renew that sub? And why would they? Yet again, Phil shot himself in the foot there, like an idiot. But I've been playing. If I were playing other stuff, new releases, I'm sure, you know, people would start coming again. But what can I do? I can't have a new release every day, and we got to find a way to keep people engaged during these times when there's not a lot going on. You know what I mean? Just be there is no we. It's just you. They come there to be entertained, You're in, and you have to be entertaining. They're not there to do your job for you. You want these people to give you money and make your stream entertaining, for themselves and for everybody else who shows up. Then what the hell do they need you for? They could just stream themselves. 
being real here. Especially now, I'm in a situation right now where next month, and this is not me lying or exaggerating like some people like to spin it, I got these crazy amount of taxes due. Hint, hint. Taxes, taxes, taxes. Hint, hint. Sell the house. If I can't pay these taxes, I'm in a terrible position. And now there has to be this much downtime. Karma, you guys allowed me. How many years have you been doing this, Phil? You've been doing this long enough to know that February is usually a bad month. March is also usually a bad month. You're a gamer. And you're someone who does this for a living. So you should be paying attention to the trends. The, the gaming market has been like this and shown signs, whether going up or down, for years. You should know this. You should know he has a big-ass calendar on his wall. You're telling me he can't see the number of releases that came out in February, March, and April of last year compared to this year? And not make, uh, I don't know, some type of foreshadowing of what's coming next? Really? I mean, basic statistics could teach you that. What's wrong, Phil? That business degree is really not coming through for you. I mean, you might as well just go ahead and burn that shit. What's the point? How how could you be how could you have done the same thing for damn near a decade and learn nothing? Learn absolutely nothing. That's amazing. And rather sad too. To continue to enjoy doing what I love doing for a living, and I would never want it to end, you know. You know what I mean? It sucks. Today, it's Burnout Paradise Remastered right now on the stream. Here's what I'm asking you. If you guys are bored, then make it fun. Talk to me. Let's do interactive stuff, right? Let's actually have some He really said he really said what I thought he was gonna say. So you're really gonna make them do the work for you. So yeah, just like Snow Pernell says, do my work, think for me, and pay me for it. You're really he really that's what I'm saying. This is what I've said in previous videos. He's an old man. And he's gotten so old that because he hasn't taken care of himself and he's just an idiot that now he doesn't want to do anything. He essentially, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you guys might as well go ahead and get on PS on a PSN share and play the games for him while he sits on screen and just looks at the chat. You might as well just start doing that. So any of you guys who are dedicated to Phil, go ahead and ask him for the PS share button and just go ahead and play the games for him. Why bother? Because it's obvious he doesn't want to do this anymore. But there's nothing else he can do. He's been out of the job market way too damn long. He has no other real skills to rely on. He doesn't. He's not talented in any type of way. He has nothing really besides this. And this is falling apart at the seams. Now it's getting to the point where he's admitted that he ha he's not entertaining. He has no charisma. He has nothing to offer. So you guys need to do the work for him now. And guess what? Some of you guys are going to be dumb enough to do it. Like good sheep. Fun together. And treat this more as a casual, laid-back, just hanging out stream rather than a stream that's all about 100% riveting and entertaining, engaging gameplay. That's then you're not a gamer, then. Then you're not a Let's Player, then. What are you doing? If it's not about riveting, entertaining gameplay, which even amongst those two aspects, it can still be a very chill, a very laid-back, a very cool... A very, uh, um, almost, uh, I don't know, I guess a serene type atmosphere. That might not have been the word that I wanted to use, but I'll just run with it for right now. But it could still be all those things. You just never figured any of that out. Because you're not a gamer. You're someone who plays games for money. You're someone who plays games for a living. That doesn't make you a gamer. Sorry to tell you, Phil. That's not, that's not how that works. It's not, what it's, ever, it's not always going to be like that, guys. That's the whole point of me live streaming, is that if it's not a riveting game, we can talk to each other and have fun. <laughs> is that before or after you ban them? Because, as I pointed out, I always feel like you have... He gets the most enjoyment out of banning people and getting and getting paid. That's only two things about streaming he actually likes. He likes the, he likes the power that he gets from banning people and the satisfaction that he gets out of that. And he, his ego is stroked when he gets paid. That's it. There's nothing else to him besides that. He's as, he as, as, he's as one dimensional as you could ever guess. Hmm. 
Well, hint, hint, save the house. That's why PUBG has worked, okay? But I think so many people... Hashtag pay the taxes and find a cure for gout. Or in this mindset, well, this game isn't so good, it's boring, I'm leaving. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not the point of live streaming on Twitch. Like I... You just said, though, that if they were bored... You had just said that if they were bored, they could leave. Now you're saying that, oh, don't leave now? What about the people that you banned, Phil? I know that you have this thing going out where, where you got this thing going around where if people throw some money at you, you'll unban them. I know you say that you don't do that, but let's be honest, that's what you're doing. But what, Phil? If they don't like what's being being played, if they don't like it, they can leave. Now you're saying don't leave. Now you're saying please don't leave. Well, then what are they going to do? You want them to sit around just out of pity? You don't. You're not adding anything to the to the experience. You're wasting their time. No one told you to sit on your on that love seat for ten years and do nothing, which is essentially what you did, and you got paid for it. Well, guess what? It's time to pay the piper. I get it now, totally. Listen, I get it now. I used to live stream and it was just fan service. You, you used to live stream. What? Hold up. Let's bring that back. Guys, that's the whole point of me live streaming. Is that if it's not a riveting game, we can talk to each other and have fun. <laughs> that's why PUBG has worked. Okay, but I think so many people are in this mindset. Well, this game isn't so good. It's boring. I'm leaving. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not the point of live streaming on Twitch. Like, I get it now. Totally. Listen, I get it now. I used to live stream and it was just fan service for you guys. And I didn't understand what the point of it was. You know, now it's different. <clears throat> now it's very different. Oh, so you used to wait a second, wait a minute. So you used to live stream for them and you thought it was all fan service, but now you get it. What did you get exactly, Phil? You're, that you're supposed to live stream, they're supposed to give you money, which is supposed to be engagement with you. And if the game is garbage, they should play the game for you. I mean, <clears throat> I'm sorry. They should they should make the stream more entertaining. Uh-huh. So if, if, so if boring games are the new, essentially, you know, <laughs> the Gout King presents, the Gout King presents, Q&A with whatever shitty game that you want to insert, what's the point of Axe the King? They could just go ahead and pose those questions to you right on stream and they could get it pay and they could get it answered for probably less than a buck. This might be a very good opportunity for you people who are Patreon supporters or people who, you know, are throwing off twenty dollars to get questions answered. Don't even bother with that shit no more. He's so desperate now that he'll he's literally begging and pleading with you guys to ask some questions on stream. Probably for free. If not, for a couple of pennies. Sounds to me like it's a good way to get your questions answered. And that whole $20 to answer one question thing was stupid anyway. I don't know how you guys felt for that as long as you did. Jesus Christ. Yes, Okay. It's to the point where, you know, it, you know I, I totally get it. If you want to talk, you want to hang out, you just want to... Yeah. Shoot the shit, turn this into an IRL stream where, yeah, I'm playing a game, but it's more about me interacting with you guys. Let's do it. Rather than just sitting here being bored at a repetitive game, or sometimes I look down at the stream chat. This has happened recently in the past couple of weeks. People are completely disengaged from the content. They're not talking about the game. They're not talking about me. They're talking about the random ass stuff that has nothing to do with anything. Someone brought up a random topic about world politics or soccer. You know, shit, I don't know anything about. Why is this a... You know about Fortnite, though, but you won't play it. So, yet again... You know, if you guys want to come and chill, and, and, and you, it's your stream now. It, it's the, 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 the stream belongs to the piggy banks. You guys choose what you want. And as Stone Perdell said, all right, then we'll play Fortnite. No! Okay, well then, we're going to leave. You can't sit there and give them a little bit of power and then immediately take it back. It doesn't work that way. You're not Machiavelli. What the fuck's wrong with you? You're in a desperate situation where... You need every little bit you can get. That means you're going to have to relinquish some things. It means that you're going to have to do some things you don't want or you don't like. But no one's asking you to, you know, bear your goddamn soul, Phil. They're asking you to play a game that you're obviously trash at and you're obviously too stupid to sit down, to sit down and take time to actually learn. Then play it anyway. Because that's what they want. Because everything else you're providing is trash. And it's not worth their time. 
This isn't hard. It really isn't. Discussion in my stream chat. How can I engage with that? You know, I can't engage world politics because that's going to cause too much trouble. And I don't know anything about football or soccer. So obviously it's hard for me to engage when people are completely detaching themselves from what's going on in the street. So let's, let's see what we can do. All right. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if... Wait a second. Okay, so you don't want to talk about politics. You don't want to talk about soccer or football or whatever the case may be. All right, fair enough. So basically you're saying that you're useless. Basically you're saying that you're not, you have no experiences to bring to the table. You have nothing to contribute to a conversation. You have no range. You have no depth. Then what's the point? Of, basically what you should say, Phil, is don't come here if you're looking to broaden your horizons because I'm too lazy. I'm too stupid. I'm too scared to step out of my own safety net to go out and actually interact with people and actually learn something else. I just want to sit on my ass at night, get drunk, look at WWE, that same tired ass product, and watch some shitty movies on fucking Netflix. And this is what I have been saying since the beginning. He has no depth, he has no range, he has no value outside of what he tries to present to you. And now he's admitting it. Is he coming out and saying it? No. But is he admitting it? Yes. He's blatantly telling you that I don't have anything to contribute. That's why I need you guys to do it for me. And he still wants control. Don't talk about stuff that I'm not into. There's plenty of shit that I just, I'm not into or I don't know about. But I'm willing to listen. It might pique my interest, and I might actually want to go and check that out later. I might want to look it up. Then again, I like to read, though. Phil doesn't like reading. So, you know, there you go. That's a problem, and it's all right. So then what, Phil? This is sad. This is really, really sad. We can, together, all right, try to have fun at times when things are boring or not exactly the most engaging gameplay. Together. We could still have a lot of fun together. I really do feel like we could. Just do the work for me. No. Not at all. All right. Um... <clears throat> the problem is people need to work with me on it and not just disengage from what's going on, you know, um, because that's when things fall apart, honestly, in my opinion. Like, yesterday, Burnout Paradise started out good, and then about halfway through the stream, people realized it was the same repetitive stuff, and they disengaged. And when you disengage, then what can I do, you know? I'm not going to turn the stream off, but at the same time, you know, I can't really do much in the realm of entertaining you when you're not even paying attention. And I think that's, that's what happens in a lot of cases, you know? I want, to, I want to be better. I want to entertain you guys, and I want to make it about us interacting and having fun when we're bored with the games, but... Wait a second. I don't... I mean, they want to disengage. You mean like you disengage from Dragon Ball Fighters? You mean when you you disengage from Secret of Mana? You mean how you engaged from uh, whatever that last racing game was? You disengage all the time. That's what you do. That's what you're known for. You're known for quitting. So now you're upset and mad that these people want to quit on you? How is it that you want to get better when for years people have offered you options to do so? How is it that other people, other streamers, much popular, much more popular than you, who have way more range than you, who have way more exposure than you, have offered to stream with you out of the goodness of their hearts? Literally be like, hey, Phil, I, I, I'm not going to name any names here, but you guys know a few people have offered Phil to stream, even up to this day. And Phil always turns them down or he doesn't answer them. But I thought you want to get better, though, Phil. I thought you want to, you know, you really want to try to make this work. Same old song and dance. It's not going to work, though, is it, Phil? I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work as easily as you think. I think you're going to have to hit. You're getting closer and closer to rock bottom. And now you want to sit there and play this little this little song and dance about, I want to get better. I want to try now. When before, I've been doing it this way for 10 years, and none of you guys can tell me nothing. But now, all of a sudden, I want to get better. I want to do this together, guys. While in the same breath saying, I don't want to play games that you guys want me to play. I want to play the games that I'm comfortable with playing. Okay. Again, it's hard for me to do that when you when I don't know how to, how to reach you, when you're completely turned off from what's going on, you know? Oh, maybe you shouldn't ban people. Maybe when people try to give you good advice... You shouldn't be banning them. Maybe people shouldn't have to give you bits and cheers and tips just to catch your attention. How about we try that? 
Just saying. <clears throat> so let's see what happens. Let's try it today. Again, let's play the, I'll play the game. If we're bored, let's talk. Let's do something different, right? If I gotta drive across the whole fucking map or I'm doing a stupid, boring race, let's talk about stuff. Let's treat it like a PUBG stream. I think it'll work. I do. I honestly do. But that's the thing. We have to work. It's not something I can do by myself. I Look at him. He can't get money. He can't get any money out of them now. He can't even get them to pay attention now. Look at how desperate he is. All of his own making. This is all of his own creation. This is nobody else's fault but his own. But look how pathetic he is. Look at how far he's fallen. Jesus Christ. I can't just literally talk, uh, uh, you know, out of my own butt about nothing for four hours straight and engage you guys. It's got to be interactive. You see what I mean? All right. Shout out to, shout out to Sergeant Wumi, who cheered and asked the following. And here's a, well, this is actually a pretty good point by Snor Uh <laughs> And that is the problem. He wants the pig roast Cole to give him topics of conversation. But he doesn't know what they're talking about. So the real problem in this situation is that he wants to blame the cult and the game. And it goes back to what I already ranted about earlier, where he has no range. He has no depth. You know what I mean? Snor Brunel says that it's because he's, uh, he's in his own bubble. But in truth, he just doesn't have any range. He just doesn't. He's not... He doesn't read anything. He doesn't go out and experience anything. All the, the only thing he knows about, his only real lifeline is Twitter. Twitter, his chat, and that's it. He has nothing else. And the cat doesn't really help because she hasn't gone anywhere. Unless it was with him. And whatever experiences that she may or may not have had, or had, I should say, She's he's not gonna bring that shit out until he has a reason to exploit it. So what good is this? Like I said, I think he let it slip the other day. Um, something about how she doesn't. I'm, I'm gonna go over the video. I think it's a, a Mr. Stuff's video where she talks where he talks about she doesn't like Marvel movies and something about she was forced to go and see them. He he emphasizes the word forced too a lot. You know what I mean? So. Okay, that means that she might have been in a really shitty relationship at one time, which we had already suspected. Yet again, why would you even say that? You should have just said, she doesn't like Marvel movies. That's not her cup of tea. Leave it at that. But Phil always has to give that little bit of extra. He has to give it that, 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 just a, a tad bit more cheese than needed. Or just a little bit more seasoning than needed. Just a little too much salt than needed. And now you have everybody being like, oh, wow, she was in an abusive relationship? Oh, wow, God, God damn it, Phil. Why are you with all that? Why are you always attracting all this damaged merchandise, Phil? And that's a crude thing to say. It really is. But it does beg to differ, Phil. How is it that you keep attracting these, uh, the, not just women, but these people in general that seem to have a bit of issues? Hmm. I mean, it, it takes it takes a special type of person to throw every bit of money they have at another individual with little to no give back. I'm just saying. I would know. I've never done that. But I would assume it takes a special type of personality to 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 do that. Eh, I could be wrong. Phil, are your parents proud or disappointing on what you're doing for a living? My biological dad is still mad at me. That I didn't become something better than being in car or motorsports circle. Um, well. Here comes the lie. Let me put it this way. Here comes the lie. When I was growing up, all right, when I was growing up. Whoa, 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 whoa. And do you ever notice how it's always, he's asked a very direct question, and instead of giving them, giving you a direct answer, we have to, instead of moving forward, we have to move back. We have to go on a field trip, essentially. So he can go ahead and spin this crazy ass narr narrative, narrative, and then we get to push forward, and you still get a half ass question, uh, a half ass answer. It's amazing how he does that, and it's amazing what makes that even more amazing is people let him do it. My parents, of course, like every aspiring parent, they wanted the best for me. We want Phil to be a doctor. We want Phil to be, you know, something that was like huge and you know made a ton of money. You know, one of these professions. That's unrealistic. 
Because for me to be a doctor, I would have had to be rich. <laughs> you know? Um, what? None of that stuff was never going to happen. Then they wanted me to get into computer science. Whoa, computer whoa. science was huge at the time. Wait, wait, wait. Of course, my parents always had aspirations for me to be a, a professional practice of something. Or in a, you know, every wait, 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 wait. To be a doctor, you'd have to be rich. Who? What? How stupid are you? Medical school is expensive, yes. But there are plenty of practicing doctors that are probably still playing, sorry, still paying student loans. I'm pretty confident of that. Secondly, do you guys really see him going through med school? Do you really see him putting the time and effort into it? No, he's not smart enough to. He'd fail. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. He's not dedicated to anything. He's not, he's barely dedicated to his, this business. You really see him being a doctor? Especially not with that fucking chronic drip or whatever the hell he calls that snorting. No, like, all right. That was just a dumb excuse to sit there and say that you had to be rich to be a doctor. If that was the case, I mean, being a doctor, being a lawyer, actually anything that's considered a serious profession would just be out of your reach altogether, Phil. We still crying about those Ivy League schools? We still crying about you being valedictorian and you never really amounted to anything else. We still we still bitching about that stuff, Phil. Uh, I guess we can always put that right up there next to the uh, that Wolverine figurine, then, right? What happened? But my parents never had that. My dad, you know, used to work for a shipping company and then he worked for a helicopter company for most of his life. <clears throat> my mom used to be a hairdresser, and then pretty much became a homemaker for the rest of her life. So it's not like they ever had some kind of professional careers that they were looking for me to follow in their footsteps or anything like that. Wow. So just because they, in your eyes, I should say, they didn't have professional careers, it doesn't mean they did anything worthwhile. Maybe it wasn't about money with them. Maybe they just wanted you to go out and do something. There's nothing wrong with being a hairdresser and then staying home and fucking looking after your fucking pathetic ass. She tried, at least. At least so it sounds. Did she fail? I'd hate to call any mother a failure. So I won't. I'll let you guys decide what you think of that. And as for your father, it sounds like he went out and actually did some work. Some hard work. And it sounds like your dumbass looked at that every day he came home, propped down on the couch, and was just like, ah. And you looked at that and you were like, oh boy. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. No, I don't want to do that. Hey, Phil. Hey, come over here, Phil. Let me come over here. Come over here and uh, sit down with your pop. And let me tell you about my day. And he told you about everything that his day consisted of, and you were like, "No, I'm not doing that." So you were smart enough to kind of think your way out of not having to do that type of work. Yet, your father probably never had to beg anybody to pay his mortgage. Your father never had to plead with people that he didn't know to cover his taxes. But yet, his piece of shit son did. And is. And will probably continue to. So it's funny how you would almost downplay what your parents did for a living and then the choices they made after that. And look at their son. Look at their only child. Look at the one piece of themselves that they contributed to the world. And look what he does for a living. I pity them, Phil. I really do. Um... So, finally, when uh, I got this office job at this helicopter company that my dad was already working at, it was kind of like, oh, pat on the back. My son is working with me at this company. You know what I mean? And it was good because, you know, at the time, the company was doing great. The company was, like, burgeoning with business. And it was a big boom for the helicopter industry at that time when I started working for them about 12 years ago. Um, <laughs> Do you want to play the fucking game? And then, sadly, we had the banks crash. And when the banks crashed in the United States... There was no more capital to go around anywhere, and people who usually had money to spend on a frivolous thing like a helicopter didn't have it anymore. And so the entire division crashed, and they ended up doing layoffs or whatever. So really, I got laid off, and luckily I had YouTube as a backup hobby. There was something to fall back on, because if I didn't have it, I would have had no job at all. Okay? Um, <clears throat> no, you would have started from the bottom somewhere else and worked your way up. That's what you should have done. That's what should have happened. A backup hobby, it's a hobby. If you could make money off your hobby, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. 
but you can't say that this is a backup hobby like it was a second job because that's not what it was. All right. So, you know, yeah, admittedly, starting to do video games for a living, you know, and doing YouTube videos for a living, I know for a fact my dad and mom were like, oh, God, you know, how's this going to work? But once they started to see how much money I was starting to make, right, because keep in mind, when I first started doing this full time around 2011, I was virally popular on YouTube. I was the ultimate underdog. I was the guy who... Ultimate underdog. Is that what you're going to have to put on your gravestone, Phil? Here laid the ultimate underdog. I'm sorry, Phil. Last time I checked, last time I checked, I've heard war heroes who have been called that. You know, Phil, people who actually went off and did something for their country. People who actually went out and laid down their lives in a lot of cases and made sacrifices. Real sacrifices. So pieces of shit like me could talk, could talk shit about pieces of shit like you. Hmm. It's amazing how stuff like that works out, right? Because essentially, we're both wrong. We're wrong on two fronts. Hmm. It's an interesting, it's an interesting frame of thought. For two years, I played every major game on YouTube. For, I never made a penny doing it. It was just a hobby. And now that I lost this office job and YouTube is bullying me around with false copyright strikes and all this shit, people had my back. They were like, man, here, here he is. He really is the ultimate underdog. Let's make this guy who's just a regular guy who plays games and has funny commentary. Let's make this guy, you know, big. And they did, man. You know, every playthrough, every playthrough that I played, people would watch virally. You know, we're talking anywhere from 50,000 to 100,000 views on part one of any playthrough that I played. I'm more about looking forward than looking back. Exactly. You're living in the past. Exactly. You need to move on. Yep. For a good year. That was pretty nuts, man. Um, and like I said, that one year, that first year that I did it on YouTube, I made a ridiculous amount of money. And then my parents were like, oh, shit. You know, what's, the, the bottom line is, and this is the truth, a lot of parents... But no, 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 no. No, I'm not, I'm not going to let you skip over that. All right, so you made a ridiculous amount of money. And what'd you do with it? Because that's the reason why he stopped. He stopped right then and there because he didn't want to talk about all the money he made and all the shit that he spent and he didn't, and all the money that he didn't save and then have to explain that next. That's what he wanted. That's why he stopped it right there. Because he didn't want to talk about the amount of money that he made and why he didn't save any of it. Because he doesn't want to be confronted with that. He does not want to be confronted with the fact that he made tens of thousands of dollars. He made 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars in those first year or so, maybe two, before shit really got crazy. And he probably started making six figures and didn't save a damn dime of it. But then he can crawl back to you guys and ask them to pull him out of the situation where he owes money on taxes. For a mistake that he made. Not you as the fan base, as the cult, as the piggy banks. He made that. But yet he expects you guys to pay for it. And nothing can tell him differently. You will pay for it. Come hell or high water, one way or another, you guys will pay for it. In his eyes, it's already set in stone. It's just a matter of prying you guys away from your wallets or your mommy's credit cards. Whatever comes first. Don't care about what their kids do. Some don't. Some just about can they provide? Are they doing something where they're making money and they can, you know, is it something to pay the bills where they can reliably have income? <clears throat> That's all they really care about. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't think my And you don't even have that. My parents really cared that I was making videos for the internet as long as it was something that was able to be, so, uh, you know, a, a supportive thing. I could pay my mortgage. I could pay my bills. I wasn't going to crazy financial debt doing something that was silly or stupid, you know. Um, Which is exactly what happened. You let YouTube put you in debt twice. Now that I think about it. So yeah, uh, I think that really, ultimately, my parents didn't really, they never really understood what I did. I don't think they watch, ever watched a gameplay video of mine or anything like that. They don't like video games. So if they were to watch that stuff, they wouldn't even know what's going on. <clears throat> Being quite honest with you guys. Um, Isn't that funny? But I think now they obviously respect it a lot more, especially now I've been doing this for 10 years. You know, I've been doing it for a living for eight Um I think they understand that it is a more, a lot more serious. And let's be honest, it's actually been more stable 
with all its ups and downs and all the issues I've had with YouTube ad revenue plummeting and me having to go from different streaming services and false copyright strikes, still when you think about it, I've done this for eight years. I, didn't, I only had my office job for five <laughs> before they laid me off. So this has actually been more stable and consistent than the office job. <laughs> um, no, no. First things first. We don't actually know. You, you've told us what you are. Uh, you've told us what were the parameters on why they fired you. I de I debate that that's not why you got fired. First thing. Second thing. You believe that it was much that YouTube was more stable because you did it longer. Even though, and this is truthful in my opinion, you should have been off YouTube like four or five years ago. Your 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 run came and gone. So that's the next thing. Third thing, while you were working at that helicopter company or whatever the situation was, I, I just don't care to remember at this moment. Did you have to beg for money after you got your paycheck from the, uh, the helicopter company? No, but you get your YouTube money, you get your Twitch money, and you still feel the need to beg the next day uh, on those two mediums. Uh-huh, okay. So I'm having a hard time realizing or understanding how was it stable just because you did it longer. That didn't make it stable. It didn't make it stable at all. You got a lot of money quickly in the beginning and now look at you. Now you're barely making it towards the end. I don't think a nine to five works that way. I really don't. That's just my opinion though. That's just my experience. <laughs> That's just my experiences. I, 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 I wouldn't know what it's like to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, not save any of it, and then have to beg kids that are like 15, 20 years my junior to give me money. I, I, I'm, I, I just haven't gotten to that point in my life yet. So I'm not really sure how that works. Do tell. DSP News. As stupid as that sounds, it's actually true. I, didn't, I never even put that into perspective until right now. <laughs> When I started thinking about, gee, how long have I been doing this? I just realized I've been doing this for a living since 2011. So I've been doing this longer for a living than I did any other job in my life. This is the longest I've ever done something for a job. Wow. That doesn't make it stable, though. It doesn't. That is quite remarkable. <clears throat> quite remarkable. <laughs> Alrighty, then. Ten years making gameplay videos on YouTube. In mid-2016, I accidentally streamed myself masturbating yeah i'm the guy 100 percent allowed that was pathetic in my opinion and you know tower cat just said something funny he said 60 000 videos on youtube and you're still broke yeah you're right you want to know why tower cat because youtube fucked me because <laughs> <laughs> youtube fu uh, we're, we're gonna let that one go i don't even want to i don't even want to address that <laughs> you know what fuck it so youtube fucked you Okay, so YouTube should have probably taken a portion of your money and set it aside for you in a bank account. So when you get into hard times like this, coming around to your tenure, your 10 years online, your 10 years on YouTube, they can be like, hey, Phil, uh, you know, it's been 10 years. We very much appreciate what you've done for us. And uh, we see that you're going through some hard times now. So uh, we uh, put some money away from you from all of your paychecks over the last 10 years. Here you go. You know what I mean? Just, just and we add a little bit on, on top of that too, you know, just to help you out. Is that what you were expecting, Phil? Was Phil supposed to? Was YouTube supposed to provide like retirement for you, a nest egg, four hundred one k, an IRA, a Roth? Was that what they're supposed to bring to you? Were they supposed to link you guys up with a hedge fund or something? You know what I mean? Have someone to put money away for you, look at your investments, look out for your best interests. YouTube didn't fuck you. You flooded the market with a bunch of shitty ass content and they paid you for it. What you did with the money after you cashed that check was all on you. It's foolish to believe that YouTube wasn't allowed to change its business so it can accommodate Phil Brunel. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> you don't want to be butt fucked. Trust me. YouTube changed their business so many times over the years. They changed the search algorithms to push my videos out of the search so no one can find them. 
they change the way they divvy out ads to make it so that if your videos don't have a certain percentage of viewer engagement, you don't get an ad on your video. Chances are that most of you right now, if you went to watch one of my old playthroughs, like let's say for example right now, I'm playing Burnout Paradise, and you say, man, Burnout Paradise, that's a throwback. I want to go see one of Phil's old playthroughs. How about Need for Speed The Run, right? Chances are if you went and found Need for Speed The Run and watched it, there'd be no ads. Because that's how YouTube operates. If a video doesn't have a certain percentage of viewer engagement in within the first or the last couple of months, those advertise those videos no longer get ads anymore. So even though I've got a catalog of 60,000 fucking videos on YouTube. Why would they put dead? Why would they put ads on dead videos? I'm sorry, but why, why would they do that? That just sounds stupid. If you're really, if, if you're really hurting that bad, start uploading your shit onto Twitch. Just saying. And get and try to get ad revenue that way. But that makes no sense that the, that YouTube would sit there and put fresh ads on dead videos. That makes no damn sense whatsoever. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. By far. Take, I want YouTube to put ads on videos that I haven't, that I made seven or eight years ago and I want them to put a brand new ad on that video that's not even being watched that probably hasn't been watched in months if not years that's absolutely ridiculous 99% of them don't make me any money I want more money on top of the money that I already made what the shit so fucking greedy <sighs> I really need the money to keep this house oh, boy. I need your help you can't just believe everything you're told on the internet us it's a scam that's insanity that's just fucked in the head dude that's not normal mental behavior it's greed it's greed greed is massively strong i have no fucking self-control why do you guys think i have to constantly be uploading videos to youtube because it's the new stuff that gets the ads the old stuff the ads don't even play anymore you know they've completely screwed me that's youtube's fault not mine it's not that my views plummeted, it's that YouTube's ad revenue plummeted, not and the, and the, I did wrong. Stop being a drama queen. Why don't you listen to me? Well, I think that's it, guys. Seriously. There's nothing else to do in the game besides the same repetitive shit over and over and over. I got to play, play it for almost seven hours. I am, like, so fucking bored with this game. I can't play this anymore. <clears throat> I seriously can't. I'm so bored. I don't, you know... 35, there might be 35 more generic missions to, to get probably the gold trophy and beat the game. Or 34, excuse me. And see, he's mad because people want to pick up and leave on him. Who wants to sit around and watch a quitter? I'm being brutally honest. Who wants to sit around and watch a quitter? That's all he is. All it'll probably ever be. And he proves it every day. The most simplest thing to sit down, play video games, and be entertaining about it. Because remember, he chose Twitch. Twitch didn't choose him. And he can't even do that right. So he's a quitter. And yet, he's upset that people want to leave. People want to leave him. People want no parts of him. People are tired of him. And all he does is quit. All he does is shit up or quit. Everything he touches. All right. Dude, this is so boring. Now, everyone agrees. So everyone on shoes like, dude, this game's fucking boring. <sighs> Laziness. This game, to me, <clears throat> seems like a game. It's the ultimate chill game. You're just bored. Drive around, have a drink, have a smoke. Just drive around and just do random shit, right? You don't, you don't get too upset about it. There's no story. It's just the ultimate chill game. But this game was $40. I spent $40 on this fucking game. I got ripped the fuck off. This game ain't worth $40 in 2018. Fuck no. This should have been like $10 or $15. $40 to just drive around and do generic shit? What on earth, dude? I'm not a whiny baby. I'm a mature adult. And I'm not a children's entertainer. Like, seriously, I'm actually angry now because this was a game I spent that money, but I was like, oh, you know, this will last four big sessions. This will be a fun, you know, driving game for me to do for the weekend. Like I said, I can understand why people like this game. It has a place, but definitely not for an ongoing stream, and definitely not for an ongoing playthrough, and definitely not for for forty bucks. Holy shit, dude! Seriously. Wow. All right, well that is it, folks, for Burnout Paradise. I'm bored. I'm not keeping playing this game. It's too boring. 
I'm gonna move, I'd rather move on to do other shit. And that's right, too. He rage quit Call of Duty not long ago, either. So that's three games back-to-back -back in the span of just a few weeks. I just sit here and be bored constantly, so I guess that's it for the playthrough. Uh, and, of course, I got it digitally. You can't buy it. I don't think you can buy this physically anyway. But I got it digitally, so no trading value or nothing. 40 bucks, literally down the goddamn drain. <clears throat> All right, everyone. Thank you, anyway, for watching. That sucked. That seriously sucked. Ah, uh, the salty tears. Oh, yeah, it's salt, 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 salt. It's oh, even now, I get my mouth overpowered with salt flavor. My mouth is full of salt. All I can taste is the saltiness. There goes the delete. And secret of mana. There's the delete on that. Ugh. This blows. So I'm ending half an hour early. There's nothing for me to do. Um, at all. This blows, you know? I'm sorry, guys. That, 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 that this was such a joke. I apologize. Burn in hell, Burnell. And I'm gonna burn in hell for the rest of eternity because of it. Mm -hmm. You can't change who you are, I guess. What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. <laughs> Alright, guys. So, there you guys go there. Um, I might have gone a bit harder on Phil than I normally would, but um, he needed to hear it. He needed to hear it, and uh, he's uh, he's so lazy now. He's so he's almost he's almost accepted his own failure. Almost, he's not there just yet, but he's almost there. But, uh, you know, if you're a follower of Phil's, you got to do the work now. Like, really, your money wasn't enough. Now you have to actually do the work for him, too. And I hope you guys find that worthwhile. I mean, it is what it is. This goes back to what I've said before. He's lived his life. He's had his opportunities. He's had his chances. The, the choices he made were his choices and his choices alone. And yet, he would rather you guys put your lives off to the side for him you're not related to him you owe him nothing in truth he's nothing to any of you and yet he feels he feels that you guys are obligated to do just that absolutely amazing ladies and gentlemen this is dsp news always late never breaking unreliable coverage that you can't count on a gtg network and productions i'm your host slash anchor gtg and I'm signing off in the broadcast. Depressing. <laughs> so depressing. Mm-hmm.